that stays consistent is the grind. Keep on grinding. Hey, what's going on everyone? Hope you're all having a great day. Got a little bit of a different video that you guys I think will appreciate. As you guys might be aware, for the last, I want to say about two years of my weight loss transformation, my bodybuilding journey, I've discussed with you guys an amazing tool in order to lose weight, something that I love to use in order to lose weight, and that is my stepper, my Sunny Fitness Stepper. I recommend it to a lot of you guys, and a lot of you guys have purchased it. If you do want to look into it, because it's a fantastic product, there's a link in the description. It's an affiliate link. It doesn't charge you anything extra, but if you do use it, I'll end up getting... I don't know, 10 cents from that purchase. Any little bit of a, a contribution does help at the end of the day. If you guys want to purchase that, it's in the link of the description. But today we're going to be talking about one of the more recent purchases that I just just purchased, have not even used it yet, but I will be keeping you guys up to date with how this purchase is gonna be going. If I decide to keep it after the 30 days, does it break on me and all this stuff. That purchase is the Ego Fit Walker. Now I purchased the Ego Fit uh, for a specific reason. Um, I personally like to try to keep things as minimal as possible. As you guys know, the Sunny Stepper is very, very small, and I like like that for a reason. Even if you have all the space in the world, I do believe that there is a lot to be said about smaller, portable um, things. And that's why I chose the Ego Fit, because the Ego Fit is supposed to be a small, compact, easily stored, easily movable, piece of uh, machinery that's going to help you to get your steps in, help you to burn calories while at home, okay? Now, the Ego Fit, they, they pride themselves, from what I understand, in being the smallest walking pad or treadmill, whatever you want to call it. It's not necessarily, from what I from what I gather, a, a running type of treadmill. I personally prefer walking, and I'll discuss why. I have discussed it in the past, but I'll discuss why in some more upcoming videos, because a couple of people asked me, Joe, what's the best type of cardio? So we're gonna be talking about that. We're gonna be getting in depth with that question. But I wanted this purchase because it is a hefty price tag, which I don't, I don't particularly like, but it is what it is. Technology is amazing, and we have such small, compact things now that you can fit in your home, and if they work correctly and they don't break on you, they offer a lot of benefit. So I wanted out of this purchase something that to be relatively light, relatively portable. This is something that my wife is going to be using. I wanted her to be able to maneuver it around the house. I want it to be able to be stored away very, very uh, quickly, easily, and without an issue. Let's hope that this is one of these products. The dimensions on paper on the website seem to be small. I haven't opened the box yet, so we're going to discuss whether or not those dimensions were accurate uh, once I do that. You guys might be familiar. I own a tonal machine. I own a handy gym machine. Those two machines have almost zero footprint, and I own a stepper almost zero footprint and that's what I wanted when it came to this treadmill. Now you might be wondering why'd you bother buying the treadmill when you had the stepper? There's a reason for that, okay? I love getting my steps in. I personally find it to be the absolute best type of cardio that I can do outside of swimming, which I can't do on a regular basis. Uh, the best type of cardio to do in order to lose weight and be able to keep a solid body comp composition year round, okay? Again, we'll get wh into why in a later video, but for the simplicity of this video, I find walking to be the best way to do that. The stepper is a little bit more than walking. I've discussed in the past, when you're using the stepper, you are building muscle in your legs. N nothing wrong with that. You're toning your legs. You're getting a more intense workout really really crazy workout on the stepper mind-blowing how many calories you can burn in such a short period of time because of the intensity of that stepper but i've been using it for about two years and it occurred to me that you're not just walking when you're on the stepper it is low impact relatively low impact but i wanted something a little more low impact for the simple fact that i want longevity okay I'm worried about my legs in the future being tore up because of the stepper. Even though it's very, very low impact, you're still stepping. Imagine walking up steps constantly. That's what you're doing on the stepper. And it can eventually end up 
taking its toll on your knees, on your, you know, your ligaments, your joints. And I didn't want that to happen. That was the first reason why I purchased this. The second reason why I purchased this was because my wife wanted something too and she didn't like the stepper. She didn't feel comfortable with the stepper. She thought she'd fall off. And also, she was only able to do very limited amounts on it because of how intense it truly is. It truly is intense. If you're looking for an amazing way to lose weight, that stepper is one of those ways. And not only, not only can it help you to lose weight, but it's so low profile, it's almost non-existent and you have an incredible way to just pull out and put away your cardio machine. But when it comes to my type of training, I'm doing like 30,000 steps a day, okay? So when you're doing 30,000 steps, actual steps, like what the, the, the stepper affords you, that's a lot of stepping. When you're doing just regular steps as in terms of walking, that's another story. That's much more low impact than a stepper will be. So I bought this, test it out, see how it is. You gotta love Amazon, right? 30 day returns on prime items. And so I'm gonna check it out, let you guys know what I think about it. In future videos, I'm gonna be discussing with you what the best form of cardio, in my opinion, is, why that is, and also how the longevity of this machine is gonna go. We'll do a couple of videos on that. You know, one month review, if it lasts a month, two months, three months, stuff like that. Because you really want to know if you're spending, you're getting your money's worth. You want to know if you're getting your money's worth. And uh, at the end of the day, a lot of these treadmills on Amazon, they're, they're brought in from China. A different name label is stamped on every single one. They can all be the same model or just a little bit different, but they all have different names. And you got to just hope they're good because at the end of the day, you're not really buying from a solid, solid company, something that I would you know, consider to be solid. You're not buying from Best Buy that's gonna honor you a return. You get an extended warranty on it. You know, I wasn't even offered an extended warranty on this thing. So it comes with a year warranty, parts and labor, or whatever the case might be. Um, and you gotta hope that company will even be around. Really, at the end of the day, you gotta hope that company will be around. Because if, if it's just a, a random Chinese operated company, they could be out for a year and then all of a sudden gone. And all of a sudden that, that treadmill that you purchased never existed. You know, you can look for it again and it's just not there. So this thing, this brand has actually been around for a couple of years, which is one of the reasons I purchased it. Let's get into what this thing looks like. Okay, so really quickly, I just wanted to mention to you guys, this machine, although small compared to a lot of other machines, it's not necessarily small, it's not necessarily light. So I'm not gonna be able to weigh it for you guys. The weight's distributed pretty good over a long surface, so it's not too bad. Um, but in order to carry this thing in, it was not easy, okay? It's a pretty hefty box. So what I ended up doing was I ended up putting tape handles on the box in order to bring it in. I don't know if you guys care about this, but I thought I'd show you how to make the tape handles in case you aren't familiar. Maybe it'll help you to bring this item into your home. Obviously, this is not the box that the, the actual item came in, right? It's a small scale, so I can show you guys how to do this. So if I wanted to put tape handles around this box, let's pretend this is a box, you're gonna go like this. You're gonna take the tape, you're gonna tape it on one side. Bring that tape across, and once you get to the point where you want the handle to be, you're gonna go like this. Pull the tape out. Now, tape, tape the tape to itself, okay? Now, you have your handle. You're gonna pull a little extra tape and now you're gonna allow the tape to again stick to that box on the opposite side. So you see how I have this, this kind of a handle now? You're gonna drag that tape across the other side of the box, allowing it to stick. Once you get to the end that you want the handle on, you're going to allow the tape to stick to itself again. Bring this down, and then tape again, okay? And now you have a handle, okay? I can lift this up with a handle now. Same principle as when you're bringing this box in. If you could somehow, you know, put a tape handle around it, that can change, change how you move this thing. These things may not look solid, but they're very, very solid. And what you can do is, if you want, once you've made your handle, you can go a little bit extra with the tape and just re-tape 
every part of the tape itself other than the handle. So you can add some extra tape to where the tape meets the box so that your tape handle won't pull off your box. So I hope this was helpful. This is how I had to bring it in and this is how me and my wife were able to get it downstairs. But if my wife wasn't here and I had these tape handles on this, I could have dragged it through the house, I could have dragged it down the steps all by myself with no issues. And this is the Ego Fit Walker. So check this out. Relatively easy to move. It's on wheels. It is a bit heavy, um, you know, but that shouldn't be a problem for most people, especially because it has the wheels. Please don't mind my busted up floor. So this is it, guys. Check out the footprint when it comes to this <laughs> stepper. So you can see why I bought the stepper in the first place. Keep this in mind, huge size difference. Huge size difference. But at the end of the day, uh, it's good because now we have two, as long as it works, as long as it stays working, we have two things. My wife and I can both use each, we can mix it up. And this theoretically, even though it is on a five degree incline, which I wanted, I wanted the incline because incline burns calories faster. Yeah, hopefully it's good. Let's plug this thing in. Okay, so. Mine came with a cord. I'm saying mine because, you know, this will give you an idea of what you should be expecting. Look, this looks like an emergency release, like one of those magnet emergency releases that you find on treadmills. We have a remote. We have lubricant. Respected customer card. And we have directions. Right, so I thought you guys might benefit from this. Check this out. You see the fact that the plug barely reaches here? The cord that you get is not too much of a long cord. Look how easy it is to move this treadmill. What you gotta do is lift it by the handle part and just push. So it's really not too bad. Just wanted to show you how easy that was. I don't think most people will have a problem with this. I mean, if you're elderly, you may have a problem, but as long as you are relatively able-bodied, you'll be able to lift and pull. And there you go. Plugged in. Okay, so I tried the remote. And the remote doesn't seem to be working. Now that could be because the battery is not in properly. Or that could be because perhaps this red safety mechanism is not on it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the arms. How you do that is you turn the knobs on the arms counterclockwise, you loosen them up, and now you should be able to pick this up, okay? You can lift that up to its position, and now you're gonna lock it back into place on each side. Remember, there's two knobs, one on each side, you're gonna wanna lock that in. And the reason I'm picking this up, these handles up, is because I believe that this is where you attach the emergency stopper, the magnet. Now, I said believe this is where you attach because, like most people, I don't follow the instructions like I should for a majority of the time, even though I recommend to everybody to follow the instructions. So underneath this little yellow tab, I'm gonna pop this little yellow tab off if I can. I believe that's where this magnet actually goes because that just makes sense. There you go. You actually don't have to take the yellow tab off. So this, this hooked on really well. Now, as soon as I did this, a little light popped on on the machine. I don't know if you guys can see this light here. The light says speed. I'm going to zoom in here. So when you take the magnet off, that little light for speed, you see how you see how the screen just changed? Now watch this. I just put the magnet on and now it gives you a miles per hour, it gives you a speed option. You take it off again, 
and now it doesn't work. So that's why the remote initially didn't work. You have to have the red emergency cord strapped up on the machine in order for this to work. So I got this thing pretty much set up and I go to turn the remote on and the remote's not working. The battery is in the remote um, and all I had to do was pull out that plastic tab and I thought it would work. No, okay, so I wanted to show you guys this just in case you were like me and confused at first. Okay, so you may be able to see on this remote there are two sets of prongs. One's the negative set of prongs, one is the positive set of prongs. The positive are the smaller of the two. This battery was placed in on top of both prongs. Now, if it's on top of both prongs, the positive and negative side are not being touched. The positive and negative side of this battery are not being touched. You want to take this battery, you want to put it positive side up. The positive side is the side of the battery that has the writing on it, okay? But you want to slip it underneath, underneath the negative side of the prongs. So you may actually have to lift the prongs, the negative side of the prongs, with a little tool, gently lift it. Now you're going to place the battery positive side up, so the words facing you, place it underneath those prongs and push. You're going to want to put the battery in where you have one set of prongs touching the top side, the smaller prongs, as you guys might be able to see, and then the bottom, the larger prongs, the negative side touching the negative side of the battery. So you have one set of prongs on top, one set of prongs on the bottom, it's not going to work otherwise. You're also going to want to replace the battery cover because that's going to put pressure on the battery and allow this battery to stay in place and not move around. It's very important you don't lose that battery cover. So as far as assembly goes, this thing was literally just a screwdriver. You just need a screwdriver and maybe even something a little less sophisticated than a screwdriver to pop this battery cover on the remote open. Other than that, everything else is already set up for you. It comes ready to go outside of the box. All right, here is the moment of truth. Very nice. Excellent. Okay, so unfortunately on this device, you have to use the remote in order to stop and start the machine. There's no buttons on the, on the actual machine, which is not good. Because if you drop this remote and it breaks, I don't know what you're going to do. So make sure you don't drop the remote. Make sure nothing breaks. Uh, this is the lowest setting. The remote here has a start. It has a stop. I don't know if you guys can see it on the camera, but it has a start, a stop. It has an increased speed and a decreased speed. So I'm going to stop this right now. And now I'm going to hop on this machine to give you guys an idea of what we're talking about as far as noise, as far as whatever the case is. All right. Three, two, one. Okay, as you guys can hear, there's a little bit of what sounds like a rub. Sounds like there might be a little bit of a rub as far as this belt goes. I'm not sure if that's what that is. Let me increase the speed. Okay. So you can hear the motor itself does not have any type of a crazy noise, very quiet. I would say the motor is whisper quiet. But that other noise, I'm stopping the machine now. That other noise, that other noise sounds like the belt is rubbing. So what I'm going to do is adjust the belt. So you guys are getting a little bit extra on this video in case you need to adjust your belt. Okay, so I read the manual. The manual said that if it's not on a level surface, you may hear a rubbing noise. So I put it on a level surface because before it was over on that rug. So I put it on a level surface, still hearing the rubbing noise. Now I want you to look at something. You see here, there's a gap right there on the right hand side where my finger is. There's a little bit of a gap when compared to this left side, okay? So what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna try to bring the belt over to the right hand side. Let's take a look at how to do that. 
So on one of these pages, it actually tells you how to adjust the belt. It's pretty much like any other, um, you know, treadmill that I've seen. You just use the included tool in order to turn a screw depending on the offset of the belt, okay? So in our situation, it's on the left side. It looks like it's a little bit more on the left side. Uh, and I wanna make that a little bit more to the right. So we're gonna start the machine on the lowest setting. We're just gonna press start. Let it run on the lowest setting. We're gonna turn the screw on the left side because it's more on the left, right? It's offset to the left already. We wanna make it more to the right. We're gonna turn, insert the screw, uh, the tool here while it's running on a low speed and we're gonna turn it a little bit to the right. Let's see if the belt position slowly changes. It did. I saw the gap, and you guys probably saw the gap too, close in a little bit more to the right. We're gonna turn it a little bit more. I'm actually gonna make the speed just one notch higher I'm going to wait a moment, see if it changes a little bit more as we go. All right, it doesn't look like it's changing. So I'm going to turn it just a little bit more. Hopefully this fixes that noise. Actually, you know what? It leveled itself out. So I just gave it a second and it ended up fixing itself. So there's more of a gap here and there's more of a gap here. So when you turn it, turn it slightly. Okay, if you have to fix the belt, turn it slightly and then give it a minute and, and make sure you're on a low speed. Give it a moment to, to kind of find its place and hopefully it'll fix itself. Okay, so final thoughts on this machine. Changing the belt position didn't actually change the noise setting, uh, the, the, the amount of noise that this machine has. As you guys might be able to hear, the machine itself is quiet, but when you stand on the machine and you're putting pressure on the belt, it's making like a whooshing noise against the machine. Now, if I figure out how to fix that in the future, I will let you guys know for sure. But as far as overall thoughts, I think this thing is incredible. So far, it's been great. The incline really, really causes you to breathe heavy. I've barely been using it, and I'm already out of breath. I put it on the highest speed. It's very comfortable. As far as distance goes, I'm five foot six. My stride is perfect for this machine, and I find it hard pressed to believe you can find a more compact machine when it comes to a treadmill. It's the perfect length for someone of my size and of my stride. Stay tuned in case you want to see an update on this product. Let's hope it goes well and I have this thing for a few years at least for the price tag. Was expensive, but I think it was worth it. Talk soon, guys. Be safe. Catch you all at the next video.